from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. I'm in all black today for our episode it's because we are the weirdos, mister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is our last episode of Scary Movie Month. And this week we are dorking out about 1996's The Craft, which was a request from our friend Binksy. Oh, B- Binksy. Hello. Hello, Binksy. From the Fun Size Happy Hour or formerly of the Fun Size Happy Hour. I don't. What's the current state? I think it's still formally, but we love Binksy, and I was so glad when she requested this because we wanted to do this one anyway. It worked out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she and her husband, uh, we've mentioned them on the show before. They're based in Melbourne, and they had a podcast called Fun Size Happy Hour, which you guys should check out anyway. Hopefully, yeah. they'll pick it up again. But we talked about doing the craft, and then we're going to do something else, and we brought it back to the craft. And I'm actually super glad that we did because I watched it last night. And I'm going to just play my cards right now and tell you, I super loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was so glad we went back to this one, too. I don't know if the other one would be as fun to talk about. This is this was a really entertaining watch for me. This movie played at my movie theater. So I had seen I had seen it a lot. Um, A lot of the soundtrack is super familiar to me. Like, I just Mm -hmm. it's there's something like strangely like comforting about the movie to me even though it's not a comfort movie I don't know if that makes sense but I I was just really happy to revisit it and I think like the first two-thirds of this movie are pretty solid like yes like there was stuff at the end where I was like "Ah, that's I wish that's not where it went but that's okay it, it's a minor a minor quibble i i still really really liked it did you see this in the theater i did see this in the theater and i i appreciate the fact you know it was a movie that they made for like 15 million dollars they didn't put a lot of money into it they didn't have a lot of hopes for it it has four female leads that are playing teenage girls which at the time they were like oh people won't go see it and we were all kind of dying to see this movie. I mean, yeah. it was just, it's its about high school. It's about being marginalized. It's about groups of people feeling left out mm-hmm. and then finding their power, which considering what's happening in the world today, yeah. it's its very prescient. And I super loved it. I had the soundtrack mm-hmm. and it's very funny because it's some of my favorite songs sung by some of my not favorite bands, yeah. but they're doing covers yeah. of songs that I super duper love, but I'm okay with it. It's yeah. just, it's all nineties, lots of flannel, lots yes. of black, mm-hmm. lots of eyeliner, but I loved it. It's like a, like a, you know, comfy blanket that you kind of wrap around yourself when you're cold. It feels yeah. good. I, it's so funny. You were saying about the, uh, like the kind of the girl power aspect of it. And like, this was like right before, <laughs> girl power became a thing like I think yeah I looked it up just to be short like Spice Girls wannabe I think came out um I'm gonna look in my notes to make sure I have it right but like shortly after oh that year it came out like a couple of months after this movie like this is when Mm -hmm. this sort of thing started to take off the idea of like girl power and girl empowerment and one of the things I really liked about the movie is originally with their powers you know obviously it goes off the rails but like originally they I don't, they use it to kind of defend themselves against mm-hmm. like wrong do like you know it's like um against like poverty or racism or sexual assault or you know beauty standards like these different things that like teenage girls have to deal with all the time and they right. use their power to kind of uh, deal with these problems that teenage girls have to deal with or yeah, or teenagers, I should say, have to deal with. You, but, but especially there's a thing there about the teenage girls. And of course, 
what do I do? I have to look back and see what Roger Ebert thought about <gasps> it at the time. I read it too. Yeah. So he says, okay, so they formed this coven and it's so it's Robin Tunney is uh, our lead. She comes to the school. It's based in Los Angeles. She's from the Bay Area. We find out it's her dad and her stepmother that she lives with. She's a, a suicide survivor. She attempted suicide. Yeah. And she's a bit of a misfit. And she finds these three other girls that are total misfits at this school. And she has a date with Skeet Ulrich. Like, how so 90s can you 90s. get? So 90s. <laughs> So 90s. And I'm going to say this. I know he's Johnny Depp minor, but he's so cute. He is. He's cute. so adorable. Everybody drink. Is he is he but maybe she, not as big of a creep? So maybe we should promote him to cooler than Johnny Depp. I think Depp. I I will I'm totally stand by that. But so that's the backstory. They're high school like seniors or whatever and uh so who are they? Let's let's actually let's bring it back a little bit. Yeah. So it's, it's it's so we have Robin Tunney yeah. as Sarah. We have Feruza Balk mm -hmm. as Nancy, Nev Campbell as Bonnie, and Rachel True as Rochelle. Yes. And Rachel True is African American, and she's dealing with racism because she's going to a school with all white people. It's a private school. Yeah. Um, she's being hassled by Christine Taylor, <laughs> by Jan, who plays <laughs> who plays Marsha Brady in the Brady Bunch movie. <laughs> And we use her gif quite a lot. Yes. And when we're talking about from our What a Creep podcast, because yes. she's the one that says, sure, Jan. Sure, Jan. Uh, yeah, she gives Rachel a hard time. I'm sorry, Rochelle a hard time. Skeet Ulrich plays Chris Hooker. Uh, Brecken Meyer, that's another 90s oh my, kind he of was reference. He's so good at, like, playing, like, the best. Like, Such the a shit. Like, the toady. Like, the, yeah. like. He, I'm like, you are so good at that, Breckenmeyer. <laughs> he's he's great. He was in Clueless. He's the guy in Clueless that like gets clarity. Like he's a pothead, and then he kind of okay. Anyway, yeah. So they they form Robin Tunney, Sarah, is and all these people should be working more. They're all really good they here. Are. Absolutely, they're all excellent. So she has a bit of a witchy kind of side to her. She has some supernatural powers, and then the other three girls they're interested in magic and and witchcraft. And they kind of form this coven. And Sarah goes on a date with Chris Skeet. And they have a nice time. And then he kind of wants to, he wants to go, you know, score the first night. And she's yeah. like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not into that. And he's like, okay, I respect you. And then the next day he goes around the school and tells everybody, not only did they have sex, but she was terrible at it. Mm -hmm. But he's such a dick. Such and a dick. Fucking this creep. forces the such a creep and so the girls get together they form a coven and they have their idea of like what they're going to do as revenge if they get their powers and the one thing i don't know about you but you know as a woman in her 40s late 40s uh that spends so much money on hair coloring and covering <laughs> up my grays if i could just take my hands yeah. and wipe them over my head oh my god and i mean yeah that is the superpower of all superpowers mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But I wouldn't even need any more than that, actually. If I could no. just, like, change my hair, like, instantly and maybe uh, remove, like, unwanted body hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be – you wouldn't even have to make me skinny. I'll just take the hair. Yeah. If I just – uh, yeah, if I can have that low maintenance in my light, lifestyle, awesome. Nev Campbell plays somebody – uh, Bonnie, who has scars from a car accident and it makes her very self-conscious. So she walks around very schlumpy, big jackets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Feruza Balk, her mother, Helen Shaver, is married to a loser. Mm -hmm. They're very poor. They live in a trailer. And once again, I said Rachel True. She's African-American. She deals with a lot of racism. And so they all come up with ways to like get back at people. And the one thing for me is like Sarah made chris her like love slave yeah and i was like all right but can't think a little bigger right. than that but but she's a high school girl like yeah well she wants to think. she wants to punish him is what she wants she wants to punish him yeah she wants to embarrass him so he becomes so infatuated with her he'll just do whatever she wants and then for rachel true uh against christine taylor she has her beauty taken away from her which is her blonde hair mm -hmm. and that falls off. Feruza Balk, I love this. Her stepfather dies mm -hmm. and they inherit them. And it's only like $150,000. Like they were just like, they bought a penthouse. I'm like, 
what? Did they buy a penthouse half a or million? did they just, now they have first and last month's rent so they can move in? I, I was never, I, I'm not clear yeah. on that, but. I'm not clear because I know LA is pretty expensive, but okay. And then Nev Campbell goes in and turns out all of her scars that are on her back that have always made her self-conscious. They're gone. Yes. And so Roger Ebert said in his review, why don't they just go to Vegas and have like a show, and like make millions of dollars? Like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Like, I well, just, it's so silly. It, that's just, sometimes Ebert got it really wrong. And like Ebert, you know, wasn't really super woke in the early days. And I think, you know, it shows that he doesn't know shit about like female problems, about yeah. teen problems of teenage girls. Like the idea of them all going to Vegas and winning a million dollars or something, I guess that would be fun. But isn't it more interesting that they use their powers to protect themselves from harm? Whether it's like in their real lives that they deal with lives. every single day. Yeah. It's way better than than that, you know. Yeah, but so you have to kind of go into your inner riot girl. Yeah. And 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 go along with them on their ride. I mean, of course, because you know, I always think of like stories like this. I always think of Fantasy Island. You know, Mr. You know, you go to Fantasy Island, you can have anything you want. But mm -hmm. Mr. Rourke always said, "Well, there's a danger to your fantasy." So it always <laughs> has to be a dark. And I always get, like, get pissed. I'm like, "Why? I paid why? you a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me a good one." But but everybody has to learn a lesson. Yes. So like Nev Campbell, her character becomes very narcissistic, mm -hmm. and that kind of like works against her. Uh, Rachel True feels really bad because yeah, she you know Christine is a racist and an asshole. The character she plays, yeah. excuse me, not her. But she doesn't want her to suffer that much. I mean, she's a decent human being. Right. Uh, and then Feruza Balk is, like, super jealous because Skeet Ulrich was a guy she had her eye on. Mm -hmm. And now he's completely infatuated with Robin Tunney. Yeah. I and think she's also, like, jealous that Robin Tunney is a natural witch. And she is. And she has more powers, and it comes to her more easily and yeah, she, and she's jealous. Yeah, exactly. So at one point, Skeet is so, so in love with her that he tries to rape Robin. And so that's when she realizes like, okay, there's a dark side to this magic. We have to, we have to bring, not bring it back a few notches. And so Nancy for uh, she kills Chris. Like she like tries to impersonate herself yeah. as Robin Tunney. And then, yeah, so he's killed. And so that's when Robin Tunney's character is like, okay, I have to make sure that she doesn't harm other people. Mm -hmm. So I have to put a, yeah, I have to put a restriction on her, but that's not going to happen because you have Feruza Balk and we only, we wanted to Feruza Balk the <laughs> shit out of the role. That's what she's there for. She's, and she's really good at that. I love her. Yeah. She's so awesome. And she's so awesome in this movie. I and mean, she goes, she's all in. She's all in. She goes. Yeah bat shit insane she goes all in it's really great i think she's really great i think they're all great and they it, are it is though when she kills chris that i feel like the movie goes off the rails a little bit and i i don't know i guess that's just not where i wanted it to go but the movie is what it is i can't you know rewrite it myself but I yeah they have to learn a lesson and yeah. that's that's always kind of a drag when that happens for me. But, anyway. And the thing is, though, is like, I don't think they learn their lesson. I don't think any of them do, except for maybe, except for Robin Tony's character. Because Which is the, why she's the most powerful. Right. So, you know, at the end, the Feruza Balt character, Nancy is super crazy. Like, she's in an insane asylum. She's, like, scratched up her face and... You know, I'm flying, I'm flying. She's crazy. And then the other two don't have their powers anymore because Sarah has used a binding spell on them. And they're just like, well, she mm -hmm. probably doesn't have any spells anyway. Like, they're still bitches. Right. They're a couple of yeah, bitchy right. witches. Um, <laughs> I, I'm like, they the didn't learn. The bitches of Eastwick, the what they call them. The bitches of Eastwick is what he calls them. <laughs> they didn't learn anything which is great. at all. And I was like, that's and a Nancy winds up in a, an insane asylum, yeah. which is not fair. Yeah, I, I think. Well, you know, Blumhouse is redoing this movie, mm -hmm. and they have, and this is, I think, a big problem too. They, they, they. I think it's going to be better because 
they have a woman directing yeah. the movie mm-hmm. and, and she's going to write and direct it because there's a lot of men behind this movie. Yes. Uh, and I think it's sort of like biz- by design, they're like, well, we can have these girls with magic powers, yeah. you know, getting what they want. That wouldn't work. So we have to teach them a lesson. And the one that's the craziest, we'll put her in an asylum. Yeah. And that would, you know, that's, and I think that kind of right, wraps up with a little bit too much of a bow. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, yeah, I would have loved for them to be able to keep their powers and just yeah. kind of, yeah. Well, and the movie these dudes, they probably didn't know how to, it's not their story. Like they can't relate to it in this way, but there is like a really good story to tell here about like witchcraft is like the metaphor for being the teenage girl and finding your power and those social dynamics. It's basically, it could be like a mean girls, but with witchcraft is what this movie would be. You know, the idea of, or maybe like witchcraft is like popularity, right? So like their their coven, their group becomes popular and they get this power. And it's super common for girls. Sorry, girls, it's true. Girls like turn on like one of the girls in the group, like yeah. single them out as like the weakest of the bunch and like put her down and to make themselves feel better, look better, whatever. And there's some of that going on in this movie, but it's not like really explored. And I'm like, it could have been like, it could have been like a much deeper, like harder hitting movie than, than it is. But this one is good. I like watching it. <laughs> it's very enjoyable. Yeah. It's got good music. Uh, the, the costuming is perfect for the time and it's very satisfying. It's a decent length of yeah. time. It's not too long. It kind of, you know, you're in and you're out. Yeah. But I think there's another level that that could have been achieved yes. if they had a woman that was a screenwriter at least, or I don't know. It's just, there was a lot of men. And I think, you know, you get really attractive 20 something actresses playing mm-hmm. teenagers. You know, that's part of your marketing, but yeah. they're actually good actresses and they're really tight and they're really good together. And I think they're, it is missing a little bit of something. Yeah. But so hopefully in a more woke, you know, since Me Too right. and all and Time's Up, maybe their Blumhouse is going to make something a little more real. Yeah. And I think that's, I think part of why this movie played so well for me this time too is kind of the whole Me Too thing. We live in like a society right now where we like rapists can be Supreme Court justices oh. and president even. And it's uh, frustrating to say the least. So like the idea uh, or, or Harvey just, Weinstein. Yeah, or Harvey yeah, fuck him. Fuck Harvey. He was out it, it, this, it, this was in the news this week I that know. we're recording that, but he just went to a comedy show in New York. Yeah. And one of the women comedians is like, "Oh great, I got Freddy Krueger in the audience." And a couple of dudes started booing her. Yeah. Because she pointed out that Harvey Weinstein was in the crowd and she's like, "You know what? I'm a rape survivor and I don't want to put on a show for this asshole." Yeah, fuck him. And fuck him fuck him yeah and he's like and how yep. dare you be rude to me <laughs> they were rude he hasn't been to trial yet I'm mm. like you know what i believe the 87 women no shit. that have a problem with him you know what else is rude raping people it's super fucking rude fuck you yeah. harvey weinstein side rant okay we also <laughs> we have a show called what a creep <laughs> so we we ran a lot there if you yeah. need to get out that energy Please check out our show. But anyway. So my point to, was, yeah. is I watching this, like, I just love the idea of, like, women coming together to fuck up some shit. <laughs> yeah. There's, like, a little bit of a, like, therapeutic feeling to this movie. Uh, like I said, because I wish the ending had gone a different way. That last act, I wish it had gone a different way. So it would have been a little bit more satisfying. But up until that point. I was really digging on that vibe. I was too. And as a kid, when I was growing up, I don't, I think I've mentioned it before, but I had, we moved a few times. So I know what it's like to be a new kid in school. And it was fun to see Robin, you know, find her way so quickly and find her people. And I liked the people that she found. She found the weirdos, which are always the most fun. They are the most fun. They're super fun. I, 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 they're super fun. I respect that. So, you what know. Do you, what do you think about their Catholic schoolgirl outfits? 
uh, I, I live next door to a Catholic school. <laughs> so I, I see curls all the time. And I, my mom went to Catholic school. She didn't send us to Catholic school because she didn't think the ed education was very good. But every once in a while I see girls walking around and then I start looking around and the way men look yeah. at girls like that, ugh, you just yeah. want to beat the shit out yeah. of them. Yeah. So I think actually the year before this movie came out, so it would have been 95, my college roommate and I dressed up as Catholic school girls for Halloween not even mm -hmm. not even sexy Catholic school girls, like real Catholic school girls. Like the skirts <laughs> went down to Mary like Catherine our Gallagher. Yeah, like skirts all the way down to like our knees and stuff like that. We were unprepared for the like power that that costume had and the effect it had on men. I we were like a creep magnet in that in that outfit. Yeah. I was like, I was not prepared for this. I'm like, oops. No, it's, it's, it's been fetishized. I, yeah. Like I said, like every day during the school year, you know, at a certain time of day. And sometimes I can see the girls, they try to buy cigarettes you know, at yeah. the bodega and they'll roll up their, their skirts up. So it's above their knees, mm -hmm. you know, but they're just walking around. Yeah. And as I said, I'll see guys, sometimes cops, like slowly yeah. oh, driving by. Oh, I oh you want to just. My, the shit my out husband, of them. I know my husband was watching the movie with me and I was asking him about it. I was like, why? What's the power? What's the thing about the Catholic school girl outfit? And he said that for he's like, I like it. He's like, but it's not it's not because they're young or he's all the truth is he's all I just like a I like skirts. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like he's like, I like like a pattern, like a, a plaid skirt, basically. You know, he's like, it has nothing to do with the fact that they're 16 or whatever. It's that they're wearing a skirt, basically. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> I'm like, All right, David. Sure, da sure, Jan. <laughs> sure, Dave. Sure, Jan. I don't know. I think it's because it's it's also just like Catholic school girls were supposed to not Catholic girls are not supposed to be interested in sex. They're yeah. supposed to wait to, for marriage and then, yeah. right, that kind but, of, that uh, that Lolita kind of thing on top of it. Yeah, they're kind of like, they're naughty. Catholic school girls are so naughty. Mm -hmm. So naughty. And some of them are, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I've heard that many, many times that, you know, sometimes Catholic school girls are the naughtiest. I, that's why my mom didn't want me to go to the Catholic school in the Bay Area. There was one in Concord. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Cronolette. Yeah, they're slutty there. They were anyway when I was a teenager. The boys used to call it Cronolette. <laughs> oh, they're so clever. Yeah, no, they have they they were wild there. So no. Also, if those girls want to do it, go for it, ladies. Just yeah, that's your that's your business, by yeah, the way. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's it's that repressed atmosphere that makes people crazy. Mm -hmm. I think anyway. Yeah. Let's change the subject. What do you think of yeah, Robin yeah, yeah. Tooney's wig? It's not great. <laughs> um, and I like her a lot. Yeah. And I'm always like, she should be working more because she's always really good in what she's doing. She's True. very believable. Yes. She's attractive. She looks smart. She appears to be a smart person. And so I always I just I want to see more of her fur. Yeah. I had forgotten that she did Empire Records before this, where she had shaved her head. Shaved her head. Yeah. yeah. So at the start of this movie, I was like, wait, is she wearing a wig? And I had to like Google it. And yes, she is wearing a wig. I find the, I find the wig very distracting, to be honest. It's not her it fault. It is distracting. It's not her fault. No. But the wig is a little They didn't have a big budget. Mm -mm, they did not. And there's just, there, I'm just going through my list now. There's like this other thing too, where like they discover that um, Sarah had slit her wrists <laughs> and mm -hmm. Campbell's character says, you even did it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're so cool. You did it the right way. <laughs> I, I love, uh, did you, I love F this movie. That's one of our favorite podcasts. Yeah. Uh, Adam Risky went to a convention and Nev Campbell was there mm -hmm. signing, you know, and I, I don't remember for which movie. It's probably, but for I was very, 
it's probably for Scream because it's a horror convention, yeah. but he, he was so taken aback by how nice she was and how pretty she is in person <laughs> that he couldn't talk to her. So she had to do all the talking. <laughs> She's like, what do you want me to sign on your poster? He's like, um, she's, like, do you want me to write this? Because sure, okay. Mm. And so she, <laughs> mm. he said she was just so lovely and sweet. He was dumbstruck. I would not be surprised by that. She is very, very pretty. She's super pretty. She's super pretty. And I think Rachel True, who plays Rochelle, oh, gorgeous. is gorgeous. And she's still yeah. like, she's still super gorgeous. Like if you see pictures of her, she's beautiful. Uh, I wish she had been given a little bit more to do. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing she has is she kind of has to be, you know, the magical black person. Like, yeah. she's somebody that's being harassed, yeah. you know, racially targeted. Uh, but she has a lot of empathy for the person that yeah. was the cruelest to her. Like she's, I wish she had a little bit more to do. Yeah, like, we don't, I think she's the only one, we don't meet her family uh, there's no. the scene where she sees that Marsha, Marsha, Marsha is losing all of her hair and she's crying <laughs> and she feels really bad for her. And you think, oh, they're going to explore that. Like maybe she's going to be like on Robin Tooney's side that she's going to realize that they've gone too far or something. But it's total. It disappears after that. We never see it again. Like her, right. her guilt for that. Um, she just needed like a little bit more to do. And she's so, cause she's so great. Like, she, yeah, she's, she's really, really terrific. They all are. They all are. And Fruza Balk's awesome. She's always awesome. She's always great. She brings a certain specific kind of energy yeah. to what she's doing and you can't stop watching her. Mm -mm. So I get super upset with her fate. I hate the fact that she's in a mental hospital. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I just think it's a cop out. Yeah, that's when that, like I said, that last act, it kind of bums me out. I don't like that part. You know, difficult women being put away, you yeah. know, like Zelda Fitzgerald, like goes back decades, you know, really smart women that don't want to fit into a box mm -hmm. are kind of put away. Maybe that's what it is. It's this, she's my Zelda Fitzgerald to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, I want to rescue her. And she doesn't do like a lot of acting now. And I think that's. No. That's too bad. It's a shame. They're all really good. Yeah. Because she's, I'm trying to remember, I don't know what else she's done recently. Or Skeet or uh, the other dude we were just talking about. Oh, Breck and Meyer. My, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Cliff Young. all these people. I don't see anyone, any, any of these people as much as I'd like to. I agree. Even Nev Campbell. I, who yeah, became like I think the biggest great. star after this movie because I think yeah. Scream came out like six months later or something. Well, she was also in Party of Five. That right. was a huge show. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch Party of Five. It's too maudlin. I tried. I couldn't do it. I know people super loved it. It had hardcore fan base, but it just was not for me. Did you watch Charmed? No, I never watched an episode of Charmed. And I think it would, I, I don't know why I never did. I think it was when I first moved to New York. So I was just going out a lot. Yeah. So TV, I didn't watch a lot of Friends. There's a few things in like late 90s that are just not like a part of my pop culture lexicon because I was just doing other things. I watched some Charmed, but not a lot of Charmed. But I watched, mm -hmm. a I watched every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I didn't watch Buffy, and I think I would really like it. I, I think, think it's you would something too. I, I think it's something where I was like, one day I'm going to get the flu, and I'm going to spend a weekend <laughs> watching Buffy. <laughs> I think Buffy's really great. Yeah, but, but this movie was kind of it, kind of kickstarted this like witch thing. So we got Charmed, we got Sabrina the Teenage Witch, we got Practical Magic. Like all of these came after the craft. Nowadays, it's okay. Like people mix the supernatural into a story and it's not mm -hmm. a big deal but back in the 90s it was like well is this a movie about witchcraft or is it about this is right it, you know what i mean and if it was a couple of things people didn't know what to think about it nowadays it can be plots can be much more intricate and you can have a little bit more going on so that's why i'm excited about the remake of the craft because yeah. i think they can do something really cool with it well that's so that's one of the reasons i loved buffy so much was buffy was similar to the craft in that it's about like a teenage girl who has this power 
and but she's also like navigating being a teenage girl and it deals with like real issues that teenagers deal with but there's also this super natural element i think a new version of the craft could be like that and i would totally be down to watch that yeah i i think you and i should probably watch it and we should talk about it when yeah. it comes out i think so too we'll put it on the list yep i love the fashion so we talked about the like Catholic schoolgirl stuff, but I love the other fashion in this movie. I love the chunky black heels, mm -hmm. and I love their like satin dresses with their check their chunky black heels, and the hair is so great. I I love '90s stuff. <laughs> the '90s stuff really brings so much. I think Courtney Love used to call it the Kinder whore look, <laughs> like the, the short dresses. That's right, like with baby doll. Heel. Yeah, you wear yeah, like baby doll baby, dresses. Baby doll dresses with like boots, like stockings yeah. and boots and and a leather jacket on top mm -hmm. or choker. I yeah. hated chokers. I hate anything tight around my neck. It makes me crazy. I but definitely the, had was, a choker. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure I did. I definitely had the hair band yeah. of like just pushing and then um thin eyebrows. That got that got really popular for a yeah. while. Yeah. The thin the like overplucked eyebrows. But it had like three songs that I love. One's from the Cars, one's from the Smiths, one's from the Beatles. But they had other bands doing mm -hmm. them. So I'm like, okay, this is annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't need letters to Cleo to, right. <laughs> to play my favorite I Cars actually, song. Just I, get the Cars. The song over the closing credits was I Have the Touch, which was originally by Peter Gabriel. And the remake is by Heather Nova. I actually like the Heather Nova version, but it does not have fans. Some people really hate it, but people love the soundtrack though. The soundtrack was super popular. I have the soundtrack. I know. I listened to it too because I like a lot of these songs, but right. you know, the uh, how soon is now. Yeah. If you like that song, just get the Smiths. Don't even bother <laughs> with, I mean, come on. It is like this weird, like nineties band mm -hmm. remakes of all those songs. You could just get the originals. It's fine. Yeah. But I still like I Had the Touch by Heather Nova. I think I have it on a playlist somewhere. I still like it. You I can't help it. You enjoy it. You, <laughs> you enjoy it. You do you, Sonia. You do you, boo. <laughs> my boo. I want to go through my notes here and make sure that we, we touched on everything. There, There's actually a lot to talk about with this movie. There's a lot to talk about. Um, oh, I wanted to mention when Bonnie goes in for her treatment for her burns... They would totally give her something for the pain. I just want to say that, by the way. They're just sitting there, like, poking her with a needle, like, over and, and over. And she's crying. And she's and, crying and, and screaming. It looks really, really painful, by the way. They would totally give upsetting. her something for the pain. It's very it upsetting. the exorcist. Yeah, when, when Linda Blair is getting all the treatments and the yeah. exorcist. When uh, Reagan is, yeah. I mean, it's it's the same thing. I thought the same thing. And then the woman that played the doctor yeah. is the same woman that was in Desperate Housewives. Yes, yes. Yeah. I noticed so that 90s. Too so 90s but it's very distracting i'm like give her something for the pain give her a fucking yeah. advil or something damn yeah and i think that might be i'm like that was the last thing in my notes <laughs> they give her something for the pain <laughs> i just i think this movie's awesome and this was a really good suggestion from binksy i'm glad that we watched it it was like it's very entertaining and there's a lot to think about here. And I know that, like, people don't like it when movies get remade. They get very upset. This does not take anything away from this original. You still have it. It exists. You can watch it whenever you want. But I am very, very excited about a remake because I think it would be rad. I'm going to figure out who the director is and if, if, he, if she is on Twitter. And if she is, I'm going to make sure... I tweet out this episode to yeah. her and maybe she'll listen to us because I want to give her a big pat on the back and a, yeah, go girl. You're going to make it happen. Yeah. She'll Cause do I, it. she'll understand it. I think she will too. I made a list of other horror movies from 1996. Ooh, good for you. Okay, go. Okay. So also in 96, we got scream mm -hmm. classic from dusk till dawn, mm -hmm. which I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember liking it at the time. I don't know if I would still I like saw, it. I saw it in the movie theater and I never saw it again, but I remember having a good time. Yeah. 
uh, The Frighteners. Yep. Haven't seen that in a while. I haven't seen that one in a while either. Uh, Amityville Dollhouse. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I didn't say they were all good horror movies. <laughs> no, you just said horror. 96 That's right. horror. That's right. A movie called The Bad Moon. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I, I assume it's a werewolf movie. Children of the Corn 4, The Gathering. <laughs> God, they made so many of those. It's so crazy to me that they made so many. Because th- I think they even made another one after that. Who knows? Oh, there's been a, like a dozen. Yeah. yeah. The Dentist. I think no, that has Corbin. I don't even know that. I think that has Corbin Burnson in it. Oh. Uh, LA Law Guy. Yeah. Hellraiser Bloodline. I okay. Didn't see that. The Island of didn't Dr. Moreau. That's a famously yes. shitty movie. Yes. <laughs> Terrible, terrible it movie. Played at my theater and I still didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it like, that I, bad. I literally could have seen it for free and I was like, uh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. They could have to pay me. Uh, a movie called Little Witches. Do you know that one? Not ringing a bell. No, Same. it's not ringing a bell. You'll know this one. Thinner. Yeah. Did you see that one? Yeah, I mean it's a Stephen. King, it's based yeah. on a Stephen King story. Yeah. Richard Bachman, when he, one of his aliases are, or gnome de plumes, right? Uh, not very good. Okay, and then Tremors two aftershocks. Which now I- the original Tremors is so perfect. It's yeah. such a great movie. It's so funny. It's so sc- wonderful, and I don't like any of the ones they've done since then. Yeah, I also wrote down here. Even though it's technically not a horror movie, I think it's scary as fuck. Paradise Lost, The Child Murders of Robin Hood Hills. Have you seen that? Oh, God. That's the documentary? Yeah. There's like three yeah, of them. Yeah, the, 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 they are, what are they called? The something three? The West, the, um, it was like the West. Ba- Westboro three? Yeah, Westboro three. That's right. That sounds right. Or West Baptist oh. three or something like that. But it's these, Sorry, guys. These three uh, teenagers, because they're into like heavy metal and into um you know dark stuff they are accused of murdering these three children in their small town and eventually they are convicted and sent to jail with like little like no evidence really just because they are like goth kids right i think the movie is really really scary the idea that there's three of them yeah that you didn't do anything wrong and you could still go to jail for the rest of your life is i think really scary and it's very sad too it's super sad there's three of them because they they follow the case throughout throughout the years so and they eventually they basically kind of plead their way out Mm -hmm. um they don't admit to doing the crime but they because there's just not enough evidence to keep them there but people like metallica and the dixie chicks and eddie vetter like all these musicians because these guys are really into music uh put their money into it into their defense because they were they were a couple of them i think were they all given the death penalty i mean there was it was pretty intense yeah I but think, they're all out now yeah they had to do some weird plea deal but they're all out now yeah i think one of them got the death penalty and the other two got life right it's, it's really crazy to think that just because of what you're into you can be right convicted it's real it's fucking crazy and scary yeah. uh do you have songs for me yeah i have some yeah. songs for you so this is this is a time when lilith fair was really popular it was so it was like women on the charts and women in music I would, it was like women can be in movies women can play music what i wish they would make it li- <laughs> i wish we could have lilith fair now wouldn't it be the best i would go i would go Actually, I'm into a lot of people like Billie Eilish mm-hmm. and Lizzo, and there's like a few people. I'm like, yeah, I'll put them on tour. I would totally. Oh God, go. Lizzo and Billie Eilish together. Oh <gasps> my God, that would be amazing. Mind blown. But the all, okay. I, I so went the, to the Lil, the Lilith Fair, and it was like it's all women that go. It's like right. you know, there's like five dudes at the Shoreline Amphitheater, and the rest are all <laughs> women, and it was like the nicest audience ever. It was just like women like being super polite 
to each other like sorry oh excuse me no pardon me like it's like the <laughs> nicest like most mellow concert ever and i would totally go for that now i would love it i got that when i saw simon and garfunkel did a reunion tour like 10 or 15 years ago and it was the most mellow audience ever <laughs> Like in a nice way. Yeah. But it's just like, you just don't get rowdy listening to Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> they weren't moshing. Like there's a huge No, there's no mosh. moshing. <laughs> Play there's Adam no crazy Silence. dancing. Woo! No high-fiving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now everyone's like, Cecilia comes on there, we kind of dances. But other than that, yeah. it's just really like, yeah, you're there to hear this, you're, you're the singing. Yes. Okay, so these are just a few different women that were really popular in 96. Uh, I have... You're Making Me High by Tony Braxton. Mm -hmm. I love that, that song. That's a good song. I haven't heard it in a long time, and now I'm going to put it on my playlist. Oh, it's fucking, it's a jam. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Give Me One Reason by Tracy Chapman. I love Tracy Chapman. Yeah, I love that song. Um, Ironic by Alanis Morissette. Oh, she was so huge. You couldn't get away she from her. She was huge. And there's nothing ironic that she's singing about. Yeah. <laughs> but... It's all unfortunate events, but that's okay. It's still a good song. Yeah. Um, Jewel, Who Will Save Your Soul? Oh, my God. You couldn't get away from Jewel either. She was and everywhere. then my last one, she was everywhere. Uh, one of Us by Joan Osborne. I love that song. Me too. I, I love still love I st that song. I still love that song. That's such a good one. That's a good list of songs. Yeah, so girl power there. Yeah, we should make a dorking out playlist. <laughs> oh my God, a Spotify one. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll put that on my list of okay. things to do. Uh, what else are you dorking out about? So you and I, like I said, we co-host another podcast called What a Creep, and we're starting a Patreon page. Mm -hmm. There is somebody that I put money for on Patreon. And it's the NT podcast, E-N-T-Y podcast. And basically it's a dude and he says he's an entertainment lawyer who weighs 300 pounds and has six ex-wives. I mean, it's a goof. <gasps> but he has had his blog for like 10 or 15 years and it's crazy days and nights. And he just puts blind items on there. And you guess who he's talking about. It's all celebrity gossip shit. Uh -huh. He has a podcast. Oh. And it's $4.99 a month. It's not cheap. And I, if, I, if he's listening, I would record a little louder. Mm -hmm. Like I have to really jack up the volume to hear him. But he just talks gossip mm -hmm. nonstop. Mm -hmm. Every episode, it could be current gossip. It could be just about old school movie stars. It's, uh, it could be about Meghan Markle. It could be about Harvey Weinstein. It could be about Dan Schneider, who you and I have talked about, yeah. the guy that used to work for Nickelodeon, hasn't worked in a while. He just, he, it's all blind items and gossip. And it's, he puts out like three or four shows a week. And I just, I love gossip. I love trash. <laughs> I love it's like somebody like takes all those magazines that you're embarrassed to buy mm -hmm. at the supermarket and he just gives you all the dish and how much of it is true. I don't care. <laughs> it's just, it, it's, <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. He has a very soothing voice. Okay. So I sometimes fall asleep when I'm listening to him. Like if I'm in a relaxed state, but I, I really, I super enjoy it. And if you sign up, you, you, it's for like I said, four ninety nine a month. He has like three hundred episodes, and he oh labels my. them very clearly. So yeah, and so you can learn about Thelma Todd in the nineteen thirties, or you can learn about what Brad, who Brad Pitt is dating right now. Or it's just, it's it's interesting. He just he kind of talks stream of conscious off the top of his head, um, but I'm totally and I just love celebrity trash. Oh I gosh. just I can't help it. I. So that's where I'm getting it right now. So, so it's N-T, it's E-N-T-Y, okay. and you go to Patreon. Oh, so you have to pay for it. It's not free, but you know what? Try it for a month. You don't like it, you cancel. What's yeah. the deal? Yeah, then you're out $4.99. Who cares? $4.99. Or you can look up, oh, by the way, while you're there, look up What a Creep. That's right. And Book versus Movie. And if you feel like contributing to those shows, great, but you don't have to. 
That's right. We're what are you have, dorking at about? We're going to have a lot of fun <laughs> content on that Patreon, by the way. So Oh, yeah. You guys oh, should yeah. get in on it. Um, I've got two things, actually. One is a real qu- I wanted to mention. I sent this to you. I texted it to you the other day. There is this trend, apparently, on TikTok, which I am not on because I'm old. But there are women on TikTok that are playing their voicemails from their, like, ex-boyfriends. Like, a- some of the boyfriends are abusive. Some of them were cheaters mm-hmm. or whatever. So they're playing the voicemails, and then they just dance to the voicemails. And I super love it and think it's hilarious. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I just, I love that it's a thing that I can actually like find an article where it's like, here's a compilation of women dancing to voicemails from their ex-boyfriends and the dudes, you know, they're all like, why don't you take me back? <laughs> you know, and the girl's just like, yeah, doing their little dances and stuff. I don't know. It's very entertaining. Uh, but also, I started watching Modern Love on Amazon. Have you started watching it yet? No, it's on my list. Okay. So I am, I think there's six or eight episodes, and I've only watched three of them. But the first one made me cry like a little girl. It's like, Aww. it's a, a woman who lives in, it. I think it's called When Your Doorman Is Your Main Man. And... She's just like a younger woman, maybe in her late 20s or something, and she's dating. And the doorman is this like older, he's a little bit older, and I I forget where he's from, maybe Russia or something. And he's just like this really good judge of character and like kind of critiques all of her dates. And, you know, she starts to rely on him for other things. And it's, it's not about like love in like they fall in love relationship. It's about like this very unusual friendship like how it turns into this yeah like a real friendship and how they come she comes to depend on him and he love you know really cares about her it's really really sweet and it made me Aww. cry and then the second episode who's in it um so the first each episode is a different story so that mm-hmm. episode is Christina Matani I she was mm-hmm. in um the final season of How I Met Your Mother. That's uh-huh. the only thing I know her from. But she's really great. And I forget the 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 other man's name. And I'm so sorry. But in the second episode, it's um, Catherine Keener and Dev Patel. <gasps> he is so hot. He is, he is. He's so hot. And they're just, he's um, like a rich, like, or he's invented a dating app and she's a reporter who's interviewing about his dating app. And they're like, they're just, they don't fall in love. They talk about us. They're telling their stories about being in love. And that one's really, really great too. And he's just so hot. And I think he'd make a good James Bond. I'm like, could we make him James Bond? I think he's really, I'd be on board with that. I think he's really sexy. I can't believe that the, kid from like slumdog millionaire is so sexy (laughs) (laughs) sorry oh i'm all sweaty now anyway um and then the third one was uh that i watched had um anne hathaway and she plays someone who's bipolar and it kind of cuts between like real life and like musical numbers uh that one wasn't my favorite i felt like we talked about Anne Hathaway on our other podcast. When we talked about Matt Lauer yeah, on our other but, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Like sometimes Anne Hathaway tries a little too hard. And mm-hmm. so there's parts of the episode that are really good. And there's other parts where I was like, someone's trying too hard, but maybe that's the point. Cause she is playing someone bipolar, but I'm going to keep going. I see that in future episodes, there's one with um, Tina Fey is in it. So I'll definitely keep watching, but the, f- I would say the first and second episode are big thumbs ups. So definitely. Well, I can't wait to check it out. Yeah. And then I just wanted to let everyone know we are doing nineties in November and Mm -hmm. we have been receiving some good requests and we're still, we're still open to a request or two. So if you have some requests, send them our way. And then in December, we're going to do holiday stuff too. So if you have some holiday favorites, send them our way we like that we love requests we do we do where can people find you on the internet Margot? 
You can find me on all social media at Brooklyn Fitchick. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And all the shows I work on, I'm mainly active on Twitter. Uh, that's for all the shows that I work on. And then on Instagram, I post a lot of pictures of my cats. Because yeah. my cats are the cutest in Brooklyn. They are so cute. They're very cute. So that's where you can find me. And, and where can make people find you? You can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter. And you can find you can find both of us at What a Creep. If you want to listen to us talk more, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to right. listen to us more, more, more? And you can find Dorking Out at dorkingout.com and Dorking Out Show on Twitter. We are on Facebook, but I don't do anything there. We just post the podcast. <laughs> yeah, because Facebook is creepy. Uh, and this was super fun. I'm so glad that we talked about the craft. Thank you, Binksy, for the request. This was a good one. Thanks, Binksy, from down on. I bind you, Margo, from doing harm to others and harm to yourself. But then go ate my baby. I bind <laughs> you, Margo. <laughs> I, I bind you, Margo, from doing harm to others and harm to yourself and from doing that accent. <laughs>